All right, guys, taking advantage of Rio wanting to stop here for a minute to make a little follow-up video. Uh, you may have by now seen my story when I was talking about the amount of clothing I'm wearing right now. I'm super bundled up on this uncharacteristically cold San Francisco day, made especially uncharacteristic by the fact that it was 70 degrees like last week. <laughs> and now we're in its 40s with crazy wind chill. So I've got all, all my upstate New York winter gear. I'm so glad I invested in this and that it still fits me 20 years later, still holding up. Now, uh, you've probably seen me post in the past about cold exposure and the health benefits of that hermetic stress on your body, constructive stress on your body, not ongoing, degrading, chronic stress on your body, but exposure of different kinds of stress. Uh, exercise is a stress, temperature, both hot and cold, variations is a stress, etc. Fasting, different types of things you can do to help your body be more resilient all around. Why would I not take advantage of this walk to get some cold exposure, which I, by the way, I do often do. You'll see me like yesterday, I made a 20 minute video in my backyard, uh, it's probably about the 50s, um, and I wasn't moving around, so I wasn't getting circulation, I wasn't working out, I was in shorts, barefoot, um, at midday, hoping to get some good sun exposure on my skin while dual purposing that with some cold exposure. Low grade, okay, I'm not as hardcore as my beast friend Rachel out in the frigid tundra uh, in like a bathing suit, <sighs> cold plunging, making me feel super wimpy. But anyway, uh, tangent aside, props to you, Rachel, for doing it for real, for real. Um, but you know, any dose of even relative stress for your body is productive. It's not an all or nothing, baby in the bathwater type of thing. So, um, back to my point today. We're chilling at this tree. Uh, why would I make sure I'm extra warm to walk? Because this is a specific thing. I literally put on my clothes before leaving the house to generate heat inside so that my muscles are warm, so that my joints are warm, and specifically so that my connective tissue is nice and warm before I go out on my walk. Because one of the things I really find on my walk that I love to practice is things like my posture. And when, <laughs> My clothes are strangling me. <laughs> um, I uh, and when you're cold, you really, we really have a bad tendency to emphasize some of our worst postural tendencies, like the turtleneck, right? Literally crunching up your shoulders, hunching in for warmth. Hands go in the pockets, and they tend to not go in our pants pockets because that's more like laid back, cool, casual but they go in our coat pockets, which gives us rounded shoulder, propped up upper body. We're not able to decompress. Sorry again, guys. Um, versus when your hands are in your pant pockets, you're able to open your shoulder a little better, get your shoulder blade down your back, open your chest. It's not as destructive as this, okay? In addition to it compromising our posture, which is a really important thing to practice when you're out walking, is you want your body, walking isn't really a strengthening exercise. People, unless you are coming back from an injury, where you're literally building foundational muscle strength, walking is more of a reflexive exercise that your body is so efficient at, you don't build a lot of muscle. It always surprises people who walk a lot and run a lot that they can still have very weak glutes, feet, hips, because they're like, how? I'm on my legs all the time. It's not the same as resistance training, your body acclimates. So back to that stress response theme again. But what you are doing is you're letting your muscle systems, again, I don't have enough perspective here, but you're letting your muscles swing. You're letting, ideally, if you're not all tight and crunched up or being awkward in public, let your arms swing. I want that elbow to swing forward and have it pull your shoulder blade along your ribs, on your back. And as you're doing that cross body movement, which you can't see, but you, you can picture, you've done it before. Okay, cross body movement, foot and hand, stretching the lat, the cross-sectional fascial lines on your back and on your chest. You're basically allowing your muscle systems to glide past each other in these systems, in these chains, and these links, uh, fascial lines as people will describe them, in the way you were designed. But if you are cold and tight, that fascia doesn't want to move. If you're dehydrated, it's further not going to want to move. And so one of the best things you can do is to warm your body from the inside from your movement and from the outside from your clothes um, and your environment, just like warming up in the house, for example, so that your muscles are looser. So that when you swing those arms, you're really getting maximum glide of your tissues past one another. And that's an incredibly therapeutic value of walking, all right? So, and the other thing is when you have an old dog like mine, if you're really cold, you're gonna rush him and be a jerk about things. Cause you're like, let's just go, oh, God damn it. You have to sniff this tree for the thousandth time this week. 
So lots of reasons to stay warm in addition to all the many reasons that you might want to cold plunge and do all the things that the, the cool kids show on Instagram. I gotta get myself a dunk tank for my backyard. <laughs> Love you guys. Hope this has been fun and, and silly and inspiring. Layer up and go for a walk.